started last Sunday evening at around 8.30 p.m. when the two ladies, a woman and a sister-in-law, checked in a hotel at Akasia in the Biemasi neighborhood in Yawundi. After enjoying their drinks, small Guinness and gin tonic respectively, they both headed for room 201. The hotel officials were taken aback when this lady was leaving with a heavy suitcase from the back door Monday at around 8 p.m. Efforts to help her and her supposed foodstuff met heavy resistance. Curiosity steps in, and she was stopped by the roadside, struggling to catch a cab. Question on content of her heavy package continue, and at one point she stopped talking. The forces of law and order were alerted, like the gendarme captain who was passing that way pushed her to the blatant throat. She bursted out, saying, it is my sister-in-law who is inside the suitcase. Be that que vous voulez voir parce que ma belle sœur qui est dans la valise. C'est dit que la dame avait qu'ils sont entrés à l'hôtel. At that level, she was taken back to the hotel for verification and the replay of the scene to the shock of the onlookers. With her operation tools, she went to work using knife, machete, pistol. Le couteau, la machete aiguisée et un pilon. All this because of money. She said she's owing her husband family meeting the sum of 4 million CFA francs. Her search for money took her to one man who promised her 50 billion and the delivery place was any nearby cemetery where she was heading before hell break loose. The ease with which it was done indications she's not new in the act. But she denies all. While the cops was taken to the mortuary, the said sister-in-law was taken to the Efulan Gendarmerie Brigade. For the time being, the hotel room has been sealed. Workers there, like the occupants, are still disturbed. Nine-day-old marriage, already negatively popular. The Zambo Meng couple, deprived of the honeymoon, are instead imposed a to and fro movement at an incolmated gendarmerie brigade for some time now. The reason being that two of the guests at their wedding celebration died under the same circumstance. Vomiting, abdominal pain, Douleur intense tiredness, intense, loss of sight. Received at the Barmayo District Hospital, on the night of last August 15th, the nurses on duty could not do much, as unfortunately, despite their efforts, the two patients died during physical examination. They are the cameraman Louis-Marie Anya and the cousin of the wife, Agnès Mbala. Many other inhabitants of Nsesugu village who showed up with the same clinical picture also received medical attention, like Flaubert Mbaragamingi. I was vomiting all through the day, had diarrhea. At one time I was told one person is dead and another woman has followed. I became worried. But while lying down, I did not notice I was losing my sight. He arrived the Colmated EPC hospital unconscious. After rehydration, 45 minutes later, he gained consciousness. We declared he consumed a locally produced drink whose composition Combination unknown. Suspicion, toss, atypical, an unusual drink, rife. The ingredient unknown, talk less of the quantity. Composed by the husband himself since last April and left to ferment well to be enjoyed on the wedding day. The divisional officer of Colmetet said the rest of the doubtful liquid has been seized and sent to a laboratory for analysis. It's your concern all those who consume the fermented whiskey. I was at the center of the ceremony I ate and drank. Until now, no sign of any inconveniences. The wedding celebration, the doctor raises two diagnoses. First, that of alcohol-forced poisoning. And the second diagnosis, the thought of criminal poisoning. And only the investigation that is ongoing 
will confirm which of the diagnoses is correct. The Atlanta Police Department in the United States says it has detained a suspect following a series of gunshots Monday at the city's international airport, which left two people dead and at least one other injured. We were able to, uh, we were able to utilize our camera network, which is vast, and that was able to help us quickly track down the suspect. On behalf of the citizens of Atlanta, I offer my condolences to the families that are affected, um, that are the family members of the victims uh, from this incident. I also want to make sure that Midtown, that all of Atlanta, and everyone at our airport know that you are safe at this time. Uh, the suspect has been apprehended, and all is back to normal. A woman identified as Raisa Juicy Kenya, originally from Cameroon but currently holding U.S. nationality, has been arrested as key suspect in the killings. Videos of a purported escape attempt have since been spreading like bushfire on the internet. Shooters we found out quickly was the same person. It's a female matching the same description uh, that was seen in this area. That triggered an immediate response from this department as it was indicative of a possible active shooter situation. So our active shooter protocol was initiated. That's why you saw police resources from across the city and from various units descending on this location. It also triggered a response from our partners who we train with regularly just for these types of scenarios. Atlanta police have said that they believe the victims, Wesley Freeman and Michael Shinas, were specifically targeted but are still looking for a motive. Both men, one of them her former employer, are now known to have been dragged to court last May by Raisa Kenye, who claimed they were involved in a conspiracy against her. In a private primary and nursery school this morning, parents from French background sitting waiting to register their children in this Anglophone school. Roland Bia is a parent. She is very happy seeing the children speaking English at home, reason why all her four children are in the English subsystem of education. I love when a child expresses his or herself in English, and they teach better in English than in French. And also, when I see my children talking English at home, I am very pleased, which made me to decide all my children will be in the English subsystem. C'est vraiment un plaisir pour moi, ce qui fait que j'ai décidé que tout le reste là, ils vont seulement les suivre. A part of speaking the English language, some believe that the English culture and dressing code is the best. The Francophone parents have confessed that when they bring their children to Anglophone schools, the children master the English language better than the French language. And so that alone has like wildfire. The most Francophone parents like the Anglophone culture. They admire the, the Anglophones when they speak, when they dress, and how they present themselves in public. That has caused many Francophone parents to send their children to Anglophone schools so as to let them have this Anglophone culture in them. According to some teachers, most parents want their children to be bilingual, and efforts are mostly put in place by these teachers at the nursery level for the children to be perfect in the language chosen by their parents. It's barely two weeks to the start of a new academic year and as the countdown narrows, students on holidays have intensified measures to earn some quick cash in order to afford for their school needs. Here in Fumban, noon division of the West region, some are engaged in activities like trading and commercial bike riding. Others have gathered to clean up gutters and to sweep the streets, an initiative of the Fumban Council. The young people taking part in this campaign come from the different parts of the city of arts. For Zunedu and his friends, this is the period to master how to play tennis. I am here to learn how to play tennis in the contest Alash Bobo. And we are, we are doing well with the coach. The coach learned how to play. And, and the coach is very well. 
we are learning to him how he learn us how you are playing. And yeah, it's until here, you are still learning. Or to ensure a smooth academic year by saving up to buy necessary school prospects. The execution graph is frightening accounting for the poor performance of public investment projects in the least rural region for the year 2022. Six councils, that is, Edea City Council, Duala City Council, Duala 6, Consamba 1, Baribakem, Ndom, all recorded 0% execution rates, while Banga and Yingi recorded the highest score with 58.3% and 56.5% execution rates. On 37 councils, just four crossed the margin of 50% realization rates. The rest of the 33 went far below margin, giving a total execution rate of public investment budget for the littoral region at 17%. Participants at the follow-up meeting expressed disappointment, accusing mayors for laxity and failing to meet up to expectations. When you look at the figures that were presented, it's not satisfying at all. We are not happy. We are below expectations. There is a lot of efforts to be made for us to meet up to expectations. As of August 23, 2022, the Little War region benefited 53 public investment projects for an overall allocation estimated at 11.2 billion francs CFA. After hours of exchange, participants blamed the poor performance, which they claim was mainly caused by decentralized territorial collectivities, which you see are experiencing delays both in contracting and in the physical execution of projects. Some of the mayors are at their first experience, which makes it difficult. We also talked of the needs of readjustments of some projects. Sometimes this provokes double payments. With another deadline set to contractors, there are fears they might not meet up to expectations as heavy rains and lack of finances remains a major hindrance. It was about an hour of exchange behind closed doors between members of the National Communication Council and their August guest, Jean-Pierre Amugu Belinga. The recent sanctions on Vision Card television journalist, the content of the prompt's visit. And he is here to plead and assure the council of the full respect of the sanctions. We are Republicans and we have to respect institutions. That is why I solicited for this audience with the council. When we don't meet, a lot of things have been said. Much water has been flowing under the bridge. The sky is clear. We shall respect the sanctions as good citizens. George Obonko Kalabopsi used the opportunity to school the media owner and the journalist on their social responsibility role, not acting as catalysts of destruction. The regulatory body that we are is here to help the press have a better image and helping the press have a better image is trying to remind us each time we have the opportunity that we have a social contract with our public and a moral responsibility as a media or as a press for this country and so let's use our pens and our microphones responsibly we shouldn't transform the pens into pistols that can kill or the microphones into bombs that can destabilize. Not only did Amogo Belinga pledge to respect the decisions, he also came to solicit on the possibilities of training journalists on the canons of the profession. We plead that the council in the days ahead organize seminars and workshops to train the young journalists edifying them on professionalism. As you know, the microphone gives power and authority. An advocacy the council reaffirms is in the pipeline. World Championship here in Italy, co-hosted in Bulgaria. We're in Bari, first point. 
Cameroon's senior men's volleyball team is brazing up ahead of the world championships for the discipline to be co-hosted by Poland and Slovenia from August 26 to September 11. Good work from Russell. Nice dig. Fresh information from Slovenia where the Cameroon team is pitching camp indicates that all is unfolding according to plan with the final touches for harmony and cohesion being instilled. Well, it's still in play, not anymore. Well watched by Banner. The volleyball indomitable Lions, who are the reigning African vice champions, clashed with their Qatari counterparts over the weekend in a muscle flexing friendly in Maribor, an impressive outing according to coach Guy Roger Nanga, as Cameroon won by three sets to two. They continued training Monday with another friendly against Egypt ahead of their departure for the city of Ljubljana, which will play host to Group B contestants, which include Slovenia, France and Germany. That was some set.